How's it going everyone? Dr. Ben here, your internet doctor that, that cares about you. And today we're going to be talking about body fat redistribution when it comes to taking testosterone over the years and how that changes your body. Because I feel like there's not a lot of research on this topic, but I get this, asked this question a lot. It was actually a form of anxiety for me because I thought my body fat redistribution was taking forever. And there's honestly not a lot of good publications on this specific topic. Um, so I figured... I, I talk about it today. Uh, I know recently most of my videos focus a lot, a lot on evidence-based uh, information that's out there, but this specific video, there's actually not a lot and I'll explain why. So like, I am breaking out so much, y'all. My face hurts. My face is super, super greasy. I don't know if it's residency that's causing this. Most likely it is because my face got a lot more greasier once I started residency. So the first part of this video is going to be focusing on what do we know about body fat redistribution when it comes to taking testosterone replacement therapy for trans masculine folks and transgender men. And the second part of this video is going to be looking at my old pictures, my old cringy pictures that I took over the years while I was on testosterone to kind of see any body um, redistribution fat changes over time and I'm going to specifically focus on the hips because I think the hips uh, are is the last thing to actually um, redistribute and look different uh, since starting testosterone replacement therapy and this tends to be the norm for a lot of trans people taking testosterone. So as far as what kind of research that we do know about body fat redistribution, well, the tons and tons of research both on transgender men and uh, cisgender men have shown that taking testosterone will do some form of body fat redistribution, which means that if you are assigned female at birth, typically when you hit puberty, you will start to gain fat in areas that are uh, seen as feminine, but I, I never like I never like that kind of attribution because I've seen I have seen cisgender men with really voluptuous hips before <laughs> and really voluptuous breasts. So <laughs> I don't know. But in the in the general scheme of things, if you are, are if you go through puberty and you have ovaries and you secrete estrogen, most of the areas that you will develop fat will be in the chest area the hips and the thighs while if you uh, um your predominant hormone through puberty is testosterone you will most likely gain fat in um around the um around the waist that is the most uh, accumulated region you'll see fat uh build up for some reason everybody i feel like also develops fat in the breasts but uh, <laughs> men don't like admitting that about themselves, but I have done enough physical exams on cisgender men to know that to be true. I got sidetracked a little bit uh, talking about body fat um, accumulation during puberty, but essentially if you are a someone assigned female at birth and you take testosterone, what we do know as far as the research goes is that within the first year, we are going to see body fat redistribution from the thighs and the hips up to areas that are more uh, masculine in fat uh, accumulation, which is primarily um, the the uh, the the waist. But that's where most of uh, research when it comes to trans people ends, trans masculine people ends, um, because of lack of funding, uh, lack of uh, lack of like recruitment of test subjects, and lack of follow-up when it comes to observing these changes uh, over time. I, I know I know this sounds ridiculous, why don't we have longitudinal research like this, but as someone who's done research in the past, it is incredibly hard to even get longitudinal research done. It's incredibly expensive. I do hopefully hope that one day that this this is something that, you know, gets funded and that we can learn more about long-term effects of hormones on the body on trans folks but as far as what we know so far is that we, we will start seeing pretty significant changes within the first year but we know that many trans folks that do document their changes over time they really only document in the first year too so we don't know a lot of longitudinal data as far as social media and sharing in the internet about how these changes happen over you know half a decade a decade and later on and that's when the big issue comes where like a lot of people are super super frustrated about the body fat in their hips because they don't see a lot of redistribution they see pretty significant 
in the first year, but not enough for them to stop feeling dysphoric about the body fat in their hips after one year. So uh, today I am going to be talking about the second part, which is my personal experience with body fat redistribution after being on T for almost five years. I'm going to make my five year anniversary in September, but also talking about uh, other people I have seen on the internet. So around the year to year and a half mark of me being on testosterone, I got super, super dysphoric about my hips. I was like, man, I'm starting to look very, very masculine and everywhere else. I'm building muscle and I'm doing all of these other things. Why are my hips still so voluptuous and uh, curvy? And I, I, I hated that. So I went to Reddit. I went. I, I was more frequent on the FTM Reddit at that uh, during that time of my life. And I went on YouTube and I found one person who had been on testosterone for 10 years talk about how it took them almost seven years to have full body fat redistribution where they felt comfortable with their hips being more straight. And the one Reddit that I did find, there was maybe two or three posts that I found that talked about it and uh, trans men uh, who have been on testosterone for about five to 10 years were saying they actually felt comfortable about their hips around the five year mark. So I decided to stay patient. I've been on testosterone, like I've said, for almost five years. And finally, I think around the three to four year mark is when I finally started noticing noticeable changes in my hips where I no longer felt dysphoria taking pictures of myself. And um, now as I'm hitting five years, I feel completely comfortable uh, with my hips. Not not 100 percent, but I'm like 90, 90 percent there. And I know that in the next couple of years that my lead to 100 percent this is the fun part of this video where i look back on my old photos and videos i have taken uh to kind of see how things have changed over time and i will say some of these photos are very cringy please 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 excuse my cringiness because uh, i was still coming to myself and i was in my early 20s uh, when these were taken and two uh, in the beginning years I didn't take a lot of full body shots because I felt uncomfortable so not a lot of these photos are very very good or high quality because I was clearly trying to hide the fact that um, I had very very wide childbearing hips as they say so the first photo that i'm showing y'all is me at one year almost one year a little bit past one year on testosterone you'll still notice that i have a, i have chesticles still but it's okay we're hiding that with this cute little polo but you'll notice that um i still have body fat in areas where it's pretty evident it is more in feminine presentation. The first one you'll see is that my hips are still very, very wide. And two, if you look down at my pants, my thighs are still pretty curvy. Um, I squat and I have pretty, pretty intense thighs now, but you'll always know when you see modern pictures of me that yes, I do have big thighs, but they look very masculine. These thighs that I see in these pans actually remind me a lot of myself before I started taking testosterone. I've always been known to have very, very thick thighs. And um, it's interesting because I still have those pairs of jeans to this day. And you'll see uh, an update photo when I hit the three to four year mark where I'm wearing the same jeans and I'm not, I'm not as curvy. These two pictures are on the two year mark of when I hit my testosterone use and it was right after I took top surgery and you'll notice that my hips has slimmed out quite a bit. I still notice a bit of you know flaring of the hips but it is a lot less prominent than it was before. I also want to really want to emphasize that after top surgery I had completely changed not completely but I had changed my diet quite considerably. I went from uh, the typical regular diet that I had prior uh, not you know limiting anything to switching to a more of a whole grain, low, uh, low carb, low, uh, low, uh, simple carb diet because um, I was getting really concerned about gaining weight uh, after being on testosterone for two years, and also my um, I could see my blood sugars getting going up and up as I went to more and more appointments with my doctor, and I was like, we gotta fix that. So ever since this period on, I adopted more of a low carb. Uh, complex carb but low in simple carb diet but I kept my workout regimen pretty much the same I have three times three to four times a week 
and build it up over time. And then you'll be surprised that three years, I'm wearing the same jeans that I wore in that first photo I took, but I look so sleek, so mask. I love this top mask energy that I'm <laughs> protruding with these photos. And here's a comparison to the old photo that I took. Same pants, y'all. Same pants, but so much has changed in the, in the last two and a half years to make me look this good. And finally, y'all, these last two pics that I'm going to put up right now are uh, my four and a half year-ish a little bit more than four and a half year I've honestly taken these pictures in the last month or so um, looks and wow the changes are absolutely stunning that I've seen over the last four and a half years the picture that you're seeing with me wearing the uh, pink top was my Barbie fit and oh my gosh I feel so comfortable tucking in shirts now I I have no no fears about you know looking like my hips are wide anymore because they are just so squared out and I look uh, so dashing. I, uh, if I was more into masks and I was not myself, I would definitely have a crush on myself in this uh, fit. So yeah, that's it y'all. That's my four and a half year transformation when it comes to body fat redistribution after taking testosterone consistently as a trans man and Sometimes I feel like, wow, these changes take forever, but at the same time, like four and a half years is really not a long time. And if you see everything else in that first photo I took after a year on testosterone, I was getting those tiny little wispy beard hairs. You couldn't really tell my mustache was there uh, unless you looked really close, but look at all of those changes that happened. I am so so happy with choosing me every day and yes i do have to rely on a synthetic hormone for it but uh, most of the world nowadays rely on some sort of medication or some sort of alteration in their appearance to feel good about themselves so uh choosing me every day and choosing to take testosterone as part of my transition which not everybody needs to do um has been so so healing and uh I feel good about myself and if you are someone who are who is early on their journey uh, to taking testosterone you've decided that testosterone is going to be a part of your transition for right now if not indefinitely then know that uh, the dysphoria that you might be feeling about certain parts of your transition that's going really slow like body fat redistribution and hip hip widening it it t it'll take its time but just be patient stay consistent have a game plan everything needs a game plan um it's not just gonna magically happen you have to work for it i definitely did and let the other half which is the hormones uh do its magic and you'll get to where you need to be and that's my little little encouragement for all of y'all out there um i hope this video was helpful for y'all it was really nice for me to see these old pictures and see how far everything's come and i hope you'll share it with this with someone who may benefit from this information and uh, please feel free to follow me on instagram and twitter to keep up with my daily life and my activism work and i'll see you all in the next video this is dr ben